I got homies in Compton. My cousins used to live in Compton. I used to be in Compton. Ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, we need to talk about what's going on in Compton because Compton's in the house, okay? Ladies and gentlemen, let's find out about Compton, okay? We're going to click here. We ain't worried about this guy putting his hands up. Put your hands up! Okay, we ain't worried about him. We're going to go here, y'all, if it lets me, because it don't seem to be letting me click. So y'all hold on a second so we can get to where we need to get to. All right, ladies and gentlemen, we're going to listen to this story from CBS 2 News. CBS Channel 2, Los Angeles News. And let's see what they got to say. This is the home of Jim Hill. And I forgot all the other. Connie Chung was from uh, CBS Channel 2. I ain't heard of Connie. No, she married Mari Perpovich, Perpovich, or whatever his name is, didn't she? She sure did. She sure did. It ain't planned. Well, now at 530, blocked by the port bottleneck. One city is caught between two 24-7 ports yeah, and seeing this on their streets. Several large containers blocking... Now, we're going to pause it for their driveways. Ooh. Supply chain crisis is now spilling, as you see there, into near... Ladies and gentlemen, ask yourselves a question, just for a second. What would you do if you had a tractor trailer parked in front of your house, blocking your driveway, and there was nobody inside the truck? <laughs> that would be interesting, wouldn't it? And the police didn't show up to do anything about it. Hold on. Nearby communities. Well, CPS 2's Rachel Kim asked the transportation secretary about possible solutions. As the supply chain bottleneck at the ports of Los Angeles and Long Beach continue to leave few places for empty shipping containers to sit, they're spilling over and now waiting in surrounding communities, sometimes along residential streets like this in Wilmington. And it's a bunch of neighbors that are very upset because it's a nonstop situation. Sonia Cervantes lives along Anaheim Street, where UCTI Trucking Company is located. The company's lot only has a capacity for 65, so the additional containers now line up along Anaheim Street in front of some people's homes. I would have to go in at 6.30 a.m. in the morning to go to work. There was a trailer already blocking my driveway, so I couldn't get out. And they went with no driver in the trailer. So uh, we would honk and honk, and it was just crazy. Right now, with the ports and everything that's going on over there, we're stuck with the containers having to bring them out of the yard, and um, we only have so much space. They're, like, sitting in the street for, like, 15, 20 minutes just there. Um, sometimes they just unload the trailer in the street with no front part of it, and they just they just leave it there. There's so many pieces to the supply chain, and most of them are in private. Ladies and gentlemen, you see this idiot right here? He's an idiot. Sorry, it's just what he is. He can't help it. That's why he has the job. That's why they put him in that position. Biden, another idiot. Now, again, he can't help it either. I'm, I, look, politicians are politicians. They are liars for the most part. There are some, are there some good politicians? Yeah, just like. Diarrhea is a good thing for some people, okay? Let me go ahead and explain. I'm only doing this because somebody mentioned to me today in conversation about the containers in Compton. And I'm thinking to myself, containers in Compton? I'm thinking trash containers. I didn't know that they were parking these 40 to 53 foot containers on city streets, just parking them there. Now, what you all don't know is there are several streets in Compton and Wilmington. Compton is not, ladies and gentlemen, Compton is not closer to the beach. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Compton is so far away from the beach. It's right next to Wilmington, but it ain't next to the beach. Wilmington is near the beach and all of that. Wilmington, there are too many streets because it's mostly a commercial area. So Wilmington, there are a lot of streets they can park these containers, but as you know, too many containers. 
that's why your food's not going to get to you. Hold on. Private hands. But what we found is that the administration can act as an honest broker, and that's what we're doing, getting the different players together and securing commitments that are going to make a difference to get these goods flowing. Today, we spoke with U.S. Transportation Secretary Pete Buttigieg, who says the Biden administration is working on both short and... Oh, by the way, sorry, I apologize. I didn't know that that was Buttigieg. Buttigieg, Buttigieg. I didn't know that that was him. Where's his husband at? I'm sorry, I apologize. That that was wrong. I should not have said. I did not know that that was him. I just know that he's an idiot. Not because he's Pete Buttigieg. I, I liked him during the debate. I, I don't, I'm not a politician. Don't like politicians. I liked him during the debate. I like the image that they portrayed with him. I like the fact that they are trying to prop him so that he will be Secretary of State or something in the future. I like that. I like that they're trying to make him the politician, the man's man's politician. I, I like that. However, what I can tell you is that they're not trying to correct this problem. See, what you guys need to understand, on these cargo ships, when these ships come in, they have to unload each, pay attention, each container one at a time. You guys have no idea how much some of these things weigh, huh? 60, 70, 100 tons? Depending on what's inside. They have to offload them each one at a time. That's minutes. Probably 20 minutes per container? No. Don't know. I haven't been there in a long time. I just know it's a lot of work. There are a lot of components. Because then they got to take the container, drop it on a chassis. Then they have to attach it to the chassis. Then they have to drive it away, and then they have to park the container. Now, some docks, some yards, they just park it on the back of a flatbed, drive it over someplace, offload it by lifting it up and setting it down with a forklift or something. But most of the good places put it on a chassis, drive it over, and park it because it's supposed to be ready to be shipped out and all that stuff. But depending on what yard it is, ladies and gentlemen, it's a lot of work. Hold on. We're not going to do this whole video because there's no need. I just wanted you guys to see that there's parking on Broadway. Okay. The posse's on Broadway. Posse up. Me and Kissing Station a long way from home with Doc Ben Zimmer with the cellular phone. I'm sorry. I, 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 I was a Sir Mix-a-Lot person. I like Sir Mix-a-Lot. My posse's on Broadway. My favorite Sir Mix-a-Lot song. Baby's got, no, I didn't like that. Okay? Didn't like that one at all. Why? Because of the connotation. Because for some reason, rappers and others think that that's all they're about. Talking about violence. Because that's what people want to see. See, two weeks ago, it was 60 ships. Oh, you guys are going to love this video right here with these little containers that are parked on the street with all this wind. Whew. And I promise you this wind is something else. It just tore the lining that covers the other tent. Man, rip that to where that won't do no good. Literally just ripped it. I brought the tent down because the wind was blowing so hard. Turns out I should have left it up, but I de retracted it. And now I got to get another, uh, what you call it, for it, another cover for it. That ain't going to be nice. Oh, well, life goes on. So give me a second to pull up the second video. Y'all don't mind? I don't mind. One second. Ladies and gentlemen, there are over 400 citations issued by the police for these shipping containers being double parked blocking driveways. Ladies and gentlemen, if it was you or I being double parked or blocking a driveway in any place within the county of Los Angeles, our vehicle would be towed. We would have no option of moving it. 
they would tow it and charge us a fine. Now the city council and the board are deciding that they're going to give some permit to allow them to double park, to allow them to park those containers on the street. Because they're working 24 hours a day and offloading those containers, well, they can't stock them all at the shipping yard, too many of them. So what they got to do? Well, they got to get them off the shipping yard because they don't have any space and room. So what are they doing? Parking them on the street. Instead of parking them in an empty field, parking them in an empty parking lot, because there are a lot of those throughout California. No, they're parking them on the street. Amazing, huh? There are so many abandoned buildings, abandoned parking lots, abandoned properties, or properties that just nobody's taking care of anymore that have parking lots. And the city could temporarily get the owner's permission and give them a little kickback and say, we're going to give you, we're going to waive your taxes for the year. Okay, you just allow us to park this, and then they charge that to the shipping company and make their money back. But they're not, they're not going to do that. Hold on. Give me one second. Okay, let's find out about this. This is that photo we were talking about earlier. Ladies and gentlemen, that right there, and it was such a nice Honda. I mean, you know, I, it looked like somebody valued it because, look, it, it got no dust on it or nothing. That's somebody cleaned that. A shipping container flattened a car when it fell off a truck in Southern California. One witness told KCBS. I mean, I came in and I saw this container completely destroyed and top of my my brother's car in. Honestly, I was just shocked. I'm glad he wasn't in the vehicle. It happened in Wilmington near the port of Los Angeles. The accident occurred amidst growth. Uh-oh. Won't be watching that no more. <laughs> Definitely won't be watching that. All right, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah, we can we can stop this. What what I was doing was just showing you guys about that situation because it, it has meaning to me being that it's the county area but now you understand the depth of what's going on even if there is a container there that's supposed to go to oh I don't know North Dakota South Dakota it will be months before those containers are moved to North Dakota South Dakota why because the drivers who are on the road already have loads that they have to take to their area and then they have to either dead tell it back to their previous location or they have shipments from those areas that they have to deliver because the shipments don't just come from the port the shipments also come from factories and warehouses and other areas throughout the united states so they will need a slew of new drivers to handle that and it just don't work that way sorry charlie sarkis does not like tuna anymore you guys need to start preparing. Now, I am not making any money from telling you guys about Tarazi. But so far, everybody who's tried Tarazi, they've tried Tarazi. Okay? And they like it. Now, like I'm saying, I'm suggesting that you all get it for an emergency supply. Okay? Because when you run out of the, the food you like, oh, man, this is so great. Oh, oh this is so good. Oh, what? We don't have no more? Oh, and they ain't no more in the store? And you don't know when they're going to have some more? They said not until next year. Then what are we going to eat? Oh, here's some cheese from the government and some peanut butter. And that's it? Government ain't getting nothing else but cheese and peanut butter? Oh, and they said tortillas. Some flour so we can make our own tortillas. So cheese, peanut butter, and tortillas. Oh, that ought to be healthy. Okay, so when those times come, you will have things like Tarazi where all you have to do is add water. That's all you have to do. Now, see, I've told people it's not the healthiest thing, but I told people, get yourself some noodles. Cup of noodles. I've already stocked up. Man, I got tons of noodles in here. Why? Because I have the dehydrated vegetables and I'm having more delivered today 
going to make sure I have my supply of dehydrated vegetables because I add that to my soup because I want to make them into real soup. I don't want to just have no noodles and no juice. I want real soup. So I add my vegetables to my soup, and when I add my vegetables to my soup, Man, I tell you, and then I add some rice, too. Ooh, wait, you talk about some soup. Now, that'd be some good eating. And then I went and bought a bunch of sauces, sweet and sour and that type of stuff sauce. Ooh, wait, let me tell you, every once in a while, no, not every once in a while, because that's what I ate yesterday was the soup and the rice. What did I eat in the evening? Oh, and I had me some cheese quesadillas. Hey, I just decided I wanted to have me well, some cheese and egg quesadilla. You know, egg, cheese, and a little bit of the picante sauce. Picante? I'm getting a damn rope. Okay? Picante sauce. Yeah, I added my paste picante to my cheese egg, made my quesadilla, and that was, ooh-wee, just made my little small taco-sized quesadillas. Well, it's not taco-sized, 8-inch. It made my quesadillas. Why? Because... That's what I keep on hand when the time comes. Okie dokie. All right, ladies and gentlemen, again, because of the container issue, that issue is going to have some very horrible ripple effects. Okay? It really will have some very horrible ripple effects. And if I was you guys, if something takes, now this is me. But if something takes longer than a month to get to me and I ordered it a month ago, oh, no, you're going to pay me for that. Amazon is real good. Item doesn't show up on time. Amazon will go ahead and credit your account. Okay, that's why I order through Amazon. And if I want to return it, I ain't got to keep the original packaging or anything with Amazon. Amazon! Okay, that's why Bezos is making the money he's making because he ain't putting the people through all them hassles. I don't like that. Too big of a juggernaut. Amazon is definitely too big. And Amazon is too big. Let's just say that. But however, Jeff Bezos, he did the same thing Microsoft did, brought on the people to help him with ideas. And when he went to start the selling stuff and running their own Amazon store, Amazon, Microsoft, Microsoft is a bunch of idiots. Ladies and gentlemen, Microsoft created this new platform called teams now teams may be okay i haven't tested it yet i will be testing it out because we're leaving ring central we're not going to have ring central anymore ring central is a piece of junk even though all corporations the majority of them are with ring central that's where zoom if you have zoom zoom and ring central same platform not the same company but they run the same platform we're leaving ring central not going to have that piece of junk no more because ring central has done us wrong and they think it's okay you got to take care of them later but nonetheless microsoft bunch of idiots they went and created teams microsoft already had a brand they paid eight billion dollars for skype eight billion dollars and what did microsoft this shows you how these companies are what did they do with skype absolutely nothing they could have taken their Teams program and integrated it into Skype. Not only would they already have had their pre-audience, but they would have been able to generate a whole lot more revenue by going with a brand that people already knew. Nobody is familiar with Teams. Nobody cares about Teams. Teams is not even what you think about when you think about social media. But you do think about Skype. Skype has been around since before 2012. And here these idiots are sitting, uh, you have no idea, disappointment after disappointment, people, with that decision by Microsoft. But that's what they get. Now, here is the Microsoft Windows 11. The and just in case you guys don't have it, Windows 11 is not much different than Windows 10. There's not that much more to Windows 11. All they did was added a couple of features, ladies and gentlemen, such as they're going to have it to where you can operate certain Android apps on 
the Windows platform. Well, ladies and gentlemen, why would I need to do that? All I need to do is click on BlueStack. Well, that's all they did was they incorporated a feature like BlueStack into the Microsoft platform. But with BlueStack, I can do any APK. With Microsoft, you can only do a Microsoft Store APK or an Amazon Store APK. Of course, we're going to get around that in the future, but that's one of the only features they added. So what? They rounded off all of the boxes and, uh-uh, that don't do. They messed up with the uh, taskbar. You know how I used to have it extended? Used to have it three stacks high and used to be able to make these smaller? Can't do that now. There's only one program for it. That's because this is the pre-release build. Okay? But it they didn't do a lot to Microsoft 11. Windows 11, they didn't do a lot to it. Ladies and gentlemen, all they did was made it more social media friend, friendly. That's it. But they didn't really make it friendly because they didn't add anything to it. They didn't do anything spectacular. You would have thought with all the hype and everything that they would have done something. Oh, man, that's the bomb. Oh, oh snap. Oh, God, Microsoft, y'all done. Oh, that is an innovation that will, that will undo the iPhone innovation. You would have thought Microsoft would have come up with some fresh ideas. They did not. Now, look, for instance, Microsoft could have implemented into a system the these are called animated desktops. So they could have implemented the animated desktop into their system. But, of course, Microsoft does not think along that line. Microsoft also could have innovated the system to where you guys could go between Word, Notepad, and a PDF editor. But Microsoft doesn't think that way. Why not combine the PDF editor with Word? Why not combine a FTP uploader with a screen recorder so that you can record, but make it to where you're not creating something new, but now you've added this feature, and now people are now using your software to edit and place videos online because Microsoft has the personnel, it has the staff, it has the technology to do this, but they are not doing it. What are some of the other things? Well, Microsoft is heavy into is Xbox. So you'll see that there are a lot of features in 11 for Xbox. And because they want you to be operating on a faster Intel chip because you're using more process speed, ladies and gentlemen, most of your computers it won't work on. So you're going to have to pay attention. You're going to have to go to YouTube, watch the videos on how to upload it on your system when your system is incompatible. This system was incompatible. But as you see, Windows 11 is on this system. And you know what? I got to, there is something that I was supposed to do. Give me a second. Uh-oh, I shouldn't have done that. That's, that's the thing right there. This is not supposed to be that high. Come on down. Come on down right there. Woo! All right, that was the problem. Uh, you guys weren't able to see the whole screen. Part of the screen was cut off on the last couple of videos. So I, I didn't notice that until today when I went back and watched one of the videos. But now that's corrected. Like I said, Microsoft did a lot of things, but they could have did a lot more things. What Microsoft on that tunnel vision, they have those people who work for them, and all they can see is, okay, for instance, I often talk to the staff at FACOM, and I say, okay, I need to know, because I don't want it to be all my ideas, I want you guys to have an input. So what does anybody think we should do? And everything they've ever come up with was just a retake on something somebody else had already done. But it was ways of generating money based upon people going to the website. Ladies and gentlemen, Trust me, I don't go to the website. There's no reason for me to go to the website. It is not something that I monitor. I'm in charge of the website for FACOM911.com. But I don't go to the website. That information is there for your benefit, not for mine. So the information is placed there so that you can do what you want to do. 
there are so many forms and so many documents and so many papers there that people have used them to start their own businesses, used them to perfect their own research. But there's no reason for me to go there. And as I told people from the very beginning, information should always be free. That's why when people contact me, they are donating to the organization for my time because the time I spend with them, I have to take away from my contribution to the organization. And so those funds go that route. Now, ladies and gentlemen, I do have to go. It is after 10 o'clock, and I've been up this morning. So I got up at, what was it, 11, went back to sleep at 3, got back up at 6, because I went to sleep before 9 last night. This was tired, because I've been up since, oh, <laughs> okay. So this was tired, but I am getting the sleep I need. I'm getting an average seven hours of sleep a night, okay? So, well, you should be getting eight to 12 hours of sleep. I'm not 100 years old yet, son. I don't need to get no 12 hours of nobody's sleep. All right, ladies and gentlemen, gentlemen and ladies, ladies and gents, just wanted you to see the situation with the containers and how it. You're going to hear them talk about it, ladies and gentlemen. It's going to take months for those yards to be freed up. And while those containers are being parked on the street, they just got those uh, shipyards working 24 hours a day. So now twice as many containers are coming off those ships. So where are they going to park them? Where are they going to get the drivers for all of those containers? Impossible. It's just impossible. Impossible. Okay? It is impossible. So that means that the problem is going to get huge. And what you guys haven't heard about, because they haven't reported it, watch how many of those containers are going to be broken into. Now, many of the containers they're parking on the street are empty. Many of the containers they're parking on the street are empty. But watch and see, because that's not going to go on forever. They're going to have to start parking these. They're going to have to start running yards. This is about to get ugly. Okay? And you're going to have a lot of stolen goods on the street. A lot of stolen goods on the street. Just It's just the way it is, ladies and gentlemen. Trust me. Of that, I know because I dabbed and dabbed in that in the past. Okay? Well, only, only once, and it was only for like seven days. Okay? But I did it. Okay, not proud of it. Well, I was proud of it at the time because it was a modern day. I, I, I Even though the statute of limitations is up, I'm not bragging about it because when I did that, that was during the stint for which I told Jehovah, I'm tired. I don't feel like serving you no more. You let my best friend die. Why'd you let him die? And I walked away. That was during that sense where I simply didn't care. And I didn't care so much that I was doing all kind of stuff, all kind of stupid stuff. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm literally helping guys organize robbery. The the one rule, no guns and nobody gets hurt. Those are my those are my rules. And I was given assurances. And on the last one, there were guns. Nobody got hurt, but there were threats to hurt people. And that pissed me off. And I had to talk the idiots out of hurting the people who I was with. Who to this day, one of them is, he's passed. He was in a motorcycle accident, so he's no longer here. He wasn't actually my friend. He was a friend of my friend. But to this day, that friend, who the other one was a friend of, still thinks that I abandoned them when I'm over there talking the guys out of killing them because they are literally, we have guns, at least 27 different guns pointed at us with people behind gates. We were in Compton. That's Compton. 27 individuals pointing guns at us. So at least 27 guns being pointed at us because we weren't going to survive that little stint in that neighborhood which they arranged for us to meet, and it was their neighborhood. I, You have no idea how much I wanted to go back there. 
and let them know who I was. But even though I did not appreciate Jehovah as much as I should have then, I still appreciated him and would not have consented to taking someone's life. But that's how angry I was, that somebody would point guns at me. And I would have the whole neighborhood. That was my thinking back then. But I don't think that way no more, mama! I, as I mentioned, been through a whole lot, and I've done a whole lot. Not a whole lot of bad, but I've done my share. So when I speak to all of you, and I let you know about me, many of you don't know me. For those of you who want to bring about my past, you have no idea what my past consists of. You have no idea the amount of stuff I'm still having to forgive myself for. Not a lot of stuff. No, just things that I have said violate the principles by which I live and violate the principles of the God that I serve. So we got onto the subject because I was talking about the shipping containers and I said I wasn't going to mention something. I, during that period, performed a train robbery, a modern-day train robbery, where got away with everything. Well, I didn't get away because I did reap what I sold on that one. Told people no guns, they brought guns, and they got us for $87,000. Okay, we were supposed to take a cut of $87,000, they were greedy. And what I do know is many of them are not alive now either. The only fortunate thing is I'm alive. And I've been able to do whatever I could to make up for all of the stupid I've done. Yes, 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 the company was insured. Yes, 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 there's no money. Uh, yeah, yeah, I knew all of that then, too. That's why I did it, because, again, no guns, nobody gets hurt. The only party would be was the insurance company. Yeah, this is 30, almost 30 years. No, this is 30 years ago. Yay! Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, again, was proud then, because it was my plan, and it worked to a T. Man! Why are you putting your fingerprints everywhere? Because my fingerprints have to be everywhere. My fingerprints being everywhere is legitimate. Yours being everywhere ain't legitimate. You can get in trouble. Your fingerprints are someplace, but I don't get in trouble with my fingerprints are every place. Like I said, that's what people use me for because I'm a planner. I work things out, A to Z. Will I do anything like that now? You can put your mama's life on it that I will never do anything like that ever again. That's why I didn't complain, ladies and gentlemen, these last couple of times these idiots have put me inside of one of their facilities on vacation because I had some things to make up for. So, yes, the time I would have done for that, I've already done. Still going after them, but this is me saying to all of you, nobody can point a finger at me at this point that I've done anything for the last 20 plus years I have made it a point to pay back to society not take from society so many people are trying to take from Tommy so many people are trying to take from their brothers so many people are trying to take from their mother you guys I have a guy who wants to consult and he wants to talk about discharging of debt I told you all that's not my main focus Many other people have asked me, will I discuss such things? But I told the gentleman yesterday that I will talk to him, and I will tell him what the suggestions are. And I will be a little bit more candid with him than I have been in the past. This is not what I do, so do not contact me asking me for the same. No, there will not be any UCC-1 filings, because you don't need to do a UCC-1 in order to discharge a debt. Go back! And look at that stupid gold repeal act of Congress. Okay? The gold abrogation act. 
And C, nowhere in there does it require you to follow the Uniform Commercial Code Financing One Statement. Why? Because the Uniform Commercial Code is not law. Say what? The Uniform Commercial Code is not law. Hold on. Some of you guys don't understand. So those of you who rely on, yeah, that's somebody who emailed me today. Come on. Look at that. It's frozen. Like that movie in the tundra. Come on. I got to pause, y'all. Apologize. All right, ladies and gentlemen, I put in here Uniform Commercial Code is not law in the Constitution of sense. I did it that way because I needed to put in a longer phrase other than the UCC is not law. Okay? Hold on. While IT 36 or 3806 is not a regulation and does not have the force and effect of law, it does seem to be consistent with the pronouncements of the Supreme Court. Really? So that still doesn't make it law just because the Supreme Court pronounced something. My bad. I apologize. Did I say something wrong? Uh Uh-oh. Way too far. Hold on now. Get back on up here. Look, it still wants to go down. Look at that. It ain't letting me control. It's taking control. Look at that. It's just doing what it want to do. Let's come all the way back up here. Come on now. All the way back up here. Right here. Don't go nowhere. It has been construed that state to state a fixed principle that a regulation can never be a law for purposes of criminal prosecution. It, oh, excuse me, has not been construed to state a fixed principle that a regulation can never be a law for the purposes of criminal prosecution. Ladies and gentlemen, the reason why regulations can be law is that the person falls under contract for that regulation. Okay? You plead guilty to something, you fall under contract. Okay, now look. Whether it's law or not, it may or may not be law, depending on the structure of the particular statute. Eaton, the Eaton case involved a statute which levied a tax on Orlo, Orleo migraine and regulated in detail other migraine manufacturers. I I don't know what mar, margarine. I don't know what this is. Margarine? What the? Wait, hold on. Let me help you guys out because there's some information that you would not have gotten. I thought about it this morning and thought about telling you guys this, but I forgot. Ladies and gentlemen, those of you who have somebody coming at you for marijuana possession or other paraphernalia or other drugs, that stuff is not illegal. It's not a criminal prosecution for that. Yes, of course, you can be charged with using somebody else's junk, but they'd have to prove you don't have the right to use it. And any part of their patent that deals with, pay attention, anything of nature, you cannot patent nature. The government cannot make anything in nature illegal. They don't have that authority. You all need to start arguing correctly. Now, marijuana, again, I'm not an advocate of marijuana, not an advocate of smoking marijuana. I'm not an advocate of drugs or taking drugs. Ladies and gentlemen, I do not do drugs. Well, you sound like you do drugs. Are you sure you don't do drugs? I mean, it really does sound like you do a whole whole lot of drugs. Ooh-wee, it sounds like you're on drugs now. Your mama. What's my mama got to do with this? She your dealer or something? I know she be giving me drugs all the time, but I don't know about her dealing being your dealer. But if you, if hey, hey, if you really like my mama's stuff, I can get you a discount. What you mean, me? What the, you mean, me? You too, mother. Okay, ladies and gentlemen. That statute is a mere shadow and without legal efficiency 
to import due process of law and to declare it as the law of the land would be but a mockery. Ladies and gentlemen, statutes are not law. The Uniform Commercial Code is not law. Don't take my word for it. Go do your research. Okay? Uh-oh, I forgot about that. That's the three the three finger thing. Okay? Three fingers, you can pull up all the windows. A person can find as insane may prosecute a writ of habeas corpus to provide uh as provided in this chapter. Okay, uh-uh. Uh-uh. But they tell you right here, a statute is a mere shadow, prima facie evidence, and without legal efficacy to impart due process of law and to declare it as the law of the land would be a mockery. So if it is without due process of law, it cannot be declared as the law of the land. Sorry. Section 3 of Title 15, Code of 1940, ladies and gentlemen, Section 3 of Title 15? Uh-uh, not the code. That's a code. Don't do that. All right, U.S. versus Howard. United States versus Eaton turned on this specific fact, as the United States said in Grimald, emphasizing it has been construed to state a fixed principle that a regulation can never be law for the purposes of criminal persecution. Ladies and gentlemen, regulations are not law, not even civil, for the purposes of a civil persecution. I, I didn't say it. The courts have already made it clear. Congress already made it clear. However desirable, the one publication rule announced and adopted by the majority might be it is not the law of this state, and this court is powerless to hold otherwise, and to do so is nothing more than judicial legislation. Courts can't make law, ladies and gentlemen. Judicial legislation is against the law. That's why there's no such thing as case <clears throat> law. Okay? Okay, hold on. The majority takes the position that there is no law or decision of the court of this state, which precludes the adoption of the one publication rule. You know what the one publication rule is? When they publicize a case, that becomes the standing principle. Ladies and gentlemen, one publication rule does not apply. Hold on. I concur in the judgment reached by the majority, but can and therefore and adopted by the so-called one publication rule. No, I didn't say it. It is wholly the authority of the state is a law. This is the commercial code annexated. In fact, in Tennessee, as elsewhere in several states, it was not enacted by the legislature, nor by constitutional convention of that state, nor is it effectiveness there dependent upon any sort of state action or regulation. It is wholly beyond the authority of the state that it is a law. We do not, therefore, think that the legislature of Alabama, in enacting what is Section 5681 of the Code, intended that its language should have the meaning broader than ordinarily to be understood by its common and general use. Ladies and gentlemen, statutes are not law. Pennsylvania Code is not constitutional or statutory law, nor even regulated regulation as such. We are tasked solely with interpreting the language of the Constitution. The Pennsylvania Code, 2017. It is, a, it is rather a compilation of procedures published by the Legislator Reference Bureau, a supporting agency to the General Assembly for informational purposes only. The Pennsylvania Code, 
is not law, ladies and gentlemen. It is for reference purposes only, informational purposes only. It is not law. Have you been convicted under the Pennsylvania Code? Ignorance of the law is no excuse. You need to go back and get that junk taken care of. Been convicted of any other code? Codes are not law, ladies and gentlemen. While it may be that a statute is not technically a rule of law, it is nevertheless a law. Yes, but it is not the law. Pay attention. If you ever look at an old Western and the sheriff, he says, I'm the law in these parts. He referred to that he was the law. We are cited to no rule of law which requires the owner or possessor of real property to place signs thereon indicating this status as private property. There is no rule for you to place on your property that your property is private. They cannot make that rule. All property is deemed private property, unless it indicates somewhere on the property that it is for public purposes. Further, since it's IT ruling is not a regulation or even a treasury decision, it does not have the quality of a law of which the taxpayers charge with knowledge. Ignorance of the law. I didn't make this up, y'all. Let's go on now. Too much. All right. The intervening respondents, the ten persons who originally signed and initiated the measure of the convention, contend that the measure which they propose is a law within the meaning of the word as used in Article 48. The petitioner contends that it is not such a law. Our resolution on the basic issue requires that we decide whether, for the purpose of measure, the proposed measure falls within the meaning of the word law or laws. No, 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 no. Not within the meaning of the word law or law or within a provision of Article 48. No, whether or not it was the intent of the people that it be law. Just that simple. Just that simple. It's a simple thing. Does not have the force of law. It is not law. Does not have the force of law. It is not law. It's an overstatement based on error in an opinion in an opinion is not a decision. It is an overstatement based on error in an opinion. It is not a decision. It does not have the force of law. No decision has the force of law. Sorry. The regulation is a question. The regulation in question is not a law. Regulations are not a law. Federal Register Act. Okay, Federal Register Act. Ladies and gentlemen, everybody thought that registering for the Army was a law. No, it is not. The T-A-M, TAM, oh man, there goes TAM, TAM, is not law, nor does it have the force of law. Oh, Tam. Oh, Tam, Tam, Tam. Gina! Anyway, and let's do one more. In other words, it is not law at all. Now, why is it that there are so many things that we have discovered is not law? Because an unconstitutional statute, meaning if it is not derived from the Constitution, it is not law. Ladies and gentlemen, Congress shall make no law is the very first word of the Bill of Rights, the First Amendment, the Constitution. Congress shall make no law. So from that statement, they derived that Congress has the authority to make law. No, what the people said is Congress shall make no law. The people are the law. The people are the ones who set the laws of the United States. Congress represents those people, which is why they're supposed to go to their constituents and get a vote. They do that in some cases, but not in all. You notice, in order to do an amendment to the Constitution, they have to vote. So should they not have to do the same thing when coming up with all these other statutes? 
I'm just saying. I mean, isn't that how laws are created? But Congress has come up with this other process. We introduce a bill. Wait a minute. Where in the Constitution does it say anything about the introduction of a bill? And when we introduce a bill, it is adopted. And then once it's adopted, we sign it and send it to the president. Okay, that's fine. But where in it is the people involved? Since you're just trustees, then where do you get the authority to do this without the people's input? So, ladies and gentlemen, this is going to be the last video for a while because there's a lot of information today. And I talked a whole lot about me. Did four videos today over, of course, the last five hours. And so those of you who stayed on to the end of this video, hopefully you gleaned something in understanding the difference. Because there are a lot of people who are being charged with possession of marijuana and possession of this and possession of that. Ladies and gentlemen, marijuana grows from the ground. Now, there's nothing in Scripture authorizing anybody to smoke marijuana. As a matter of fact, smoking marijuana changes the chemical composition. Chemical composition. You change the chemical composition, you also change the effect it has on the human body. It alters those effects chemically. Okay, those people, there are a lot of people out there who believe their body is a temple of God. God ain't gave them permission to be damaged in their temple. Well, it ain't damaging. Yes, it is. Anything that alters your mental psyche damages that so-called temple. And so he doesn't approve of that. You cannot bring foreign objects into the body in such a way, okay, that alters your mental psyche. Scriptures don't permit that. I know, I know, I know. You believe what you believe. You go right ahead. Believe what you believe. I'm just telling you what the scripture says. So those of you who do have such coming at you, you need to start bringing up the fact that this is not a violation of a law. This is a violation of a criminal offense. Ladies and gentlemen, that's when you show them the Code of Federal Regulations 27-11. That's when you show them the Code of Federal Regulations that those so-called codified crimes are commercial crimes. You guys must understand, there cannot be a criminal penalty for a commercial crime. Shh. Don't tell nobody. Commercial crimes are civil. Cannot be a criminal penalty for a civil crime. We just went over that. was one of the first things we talked about. Ain't it? Wasn't that one of the first things we talked about? Well, let's go here. This is the final thing. The servicer changed the loan number thus amounting to a change in the terms of the agreement of the trust. The same as I told you guys yesterday. When you understand contract law, you understand this law right here. This is what these courts have said. Get back up there. Now, come on down. Come on down. You're the next contestant. Anyway, ladies and gentlemen, yes, I used to watch The Price is Right like a religion every morning. I don't watch it no more because I got a life. Okay. I'm looking for the part where it said altered. The defendants say that by reason of such alterations, changes, mutilations, or disfigurement thereof, so made by the plaintiff, as aforesaid, said deed is rendered void of no conveyance, pay attention, and that no title is vested in the plaintiff thereunder. I did not know this statement was there because that's exactly what I was getting ready to bring you guys. That's literally, I just stopped there. Ladies and gentlemen, let me go ahead and make sure you understand. Void of no conveyance. When they change the loan number on your mortgages, your servicer changes that loan number. I guarantee you that the original note has paid to the order of without re that endorsement is proof that payment has been made. Go back, watch the videos. Already did the videos putting that out. Okay? And because it's a new loan number, not an old loan number, not a secondary loan number, but a new loan number, new loan number, doesn't matter that they did it because of how their system is. We don't care. This predates your system. This is a grandfathered loan. It predates your system. When you assumed it, 
you assumed all its characteristics. You changed it. You created a new contract. Ladies and gentlemen, changing that loan number, that loan number is the agreement. The property address is not. The loan was not for that property. You didn't own the property. They didn't own the property. So the loan number is not for that property. When you went to the bank, you went to the bank and said, hey, I need a loan. What you need a loan for? For my own personal business? What it got to do with you, mother? And they'd be like, all right, all right, all right, calm down, mother. And you'd be like, mother, you don't be calling me no mother. And you'd be like, I, I didn't call you no mother. You called me a mother. And you'd be like, mother, don't be sitting up here calling me no mother. And I didn't call you a mother. And, you know, you have that conversation. Well, what happens is you can then tell them that when I went to them, I went to them for a loan. I didn't go to them for a home. I didn't buy the home from them. Look, here it is right here. This person I bought the home for says right there. They, this is the owner of the home. I went to them for a personal loan. They didn't give me no loan for a home. They gave me a personal loan. I utilized that and gave it to this man, and he gave me the home. Had nothing to do with the bank. This wasn't a secured loan because I didn't own a home at the time they gave the loan. This is an after acquired collateral loan. After acquired collateral loan. That's how the Uniform Commercial Code explains it. Now, if you understand that, ladies and gentlemen, and some of you should understand it, when they change that number and create a new loan number, create a new loan number, create a new loan number, they are creating a new loan. And if there's a new loan, that's a new contract. Must have value and consideration. So where's the consideration? Where's the conveyance? In order for you to pay them anything, you don't owe them a dime. Go back, pay attention, ladies and gentlemen. Now, look, I got to go 57 minutes and 15 seconds. Got to go. Y'all take care, okay? Adios. We'll be there, too.